This is how my whole house backup system works. It's a 9,500 watt Westinghouse generator that I just wheel out into my driveway. Then I grab my 30 amp extension cord, plug that into the 240 volt 30 amp plug, and then I also flip on the generator and also the circuit breaker for the 240. Then I find out my cord's not quite long enough. This is 25 feet. You wanna make sure your generator is at least 20 feet away from your home to make sure no exhaust comes in the living space. Then I'll take the extension cord, I'll plug it into my 30 amp generator inlet box, which is located on the inside of my house. And don't forget to rotate that in the clockwise direction to lock it into place. Once everything's connected up, then I'll turn off my 200 amp breaker, disconnecting from the grid, interlock plate goes down, and then I turn on my 30 amp inlet breaker from the genset. Then we'll turn off all of our other breakers, making sure that we're only running the critical circuits that I've identified ahead of time that I'll need up and running in a blackout scenario. Flip all of those to on, and then once I get the critical circuits to the on position, I'll just use a handy little feature here of the Westinghouse and that's the remote start feature. Start up the generator and now I'm back up and running. Now will this setup work for you and your situation? There's a few things you need to consider that I want to run you through. One, what is your power needs? Understanding your critical circuits and how much power those are actually going to need is going to help you select your generator, but also things like the generator inlet box behind me. Number two, how do you actually want to plug in something like this Westinghouse 9500 watt generator into your house? You do have a few options when it comes to that as well. And then we'll finish off with pricing. What does it cost for a setup such as this and some of the other options you have going all the way up into some setups that can be twelve or fifteen thousand dollars. So let's jump into understanding your power needs so you can select the right system for your home. So there's kind of two parts to the overall understanding how much power you're going to need in a backup scenario. First, we need to identify the circuits. Once circuits are identified, we need to figure out how much power those are actually taking for each circuit. Now, hopefully you have good labels on the back side of your door so you can just go down and identify which circuits are going to be applicable to your scenario. So let me run down mine, which will give you an example. First up, I have my sump pump. So in a scenario where I have an outage, there's probably some rain in the area. Maybe we had a bad storm roll through. So I wanna make sure if I'm getting any water in my basement that I can get that out of the home and I don't have any flooding issues. Second up, my family room. This is gonna power my TV. It's gonna give me some lights in the main part of the home, a few outlets to go off of. And it also runs my Wi-Fi router because we have fiber coming into the house. So in a power outage, actually I just have to have my Wi-Fi up and running and I'm still probably connected to the internet. Number three is my furnace. So I have a gas powered furnace, so I just need to give it 120 volts so I can run the blower motor and get warm air throughout the house. Again, for me, it's a good possibility a power outage could come in an ice storm when it's cold outside, I want heat in the home. Number four, I'm actually turning on a 240 volt circuit, which is to the cooktop. I'm not going to run all the different burners, but I want to have the ability to run one small burner, which would just help with any cooking during a power outage. Number five is going to be some kitchen GFCIs. So the kitchen, I'm also going to have some lights on. Again, main part of the home, I want to have some lights. And then those are going to be my main outlets, which I can power my cell phone and charge it up or my laptop and charge it up. Number six is going to be living room, dining room, just with those lights and outlets in the main area of the home. I'm going to power my refrigerator, of course, making sure that our freezer and refrigerator stays cold during a power outage so we're not spoiling a bunch of food. Keep in mind, if you also have a deep freezer, you're going to want to account for that as well. And then in those rural scenarios, you might have a few other critical circuits like that well pump that you need to keep going. So identify all of those. And once you've identified, there's two different ways that you can now get the power consumption for each of those. The first way is the easiest way, not necessarily my preferred method, but let me show you how to estimate the power consumption for each circuit. So you can just quickly Google something like list of home appliances power consumption or power consumption for common home appliances. And then usually you can run across these types of lists, which will give you an estimate from a minimum and maximum of how much power in watts will be consumed by each appliance. So if you wanted to run your TV and you also wanted to run an air purifier for some reason, and you want to also make some coffee in the morning, 
you can just add these up, right? Start accumulating these. Now, some are gonna be a constant draw. If it's a light or if you're running that TV, if you're watching TV the whole time, that's gonna be a constant draw. But if it's something else that's gonna be a intermittent draw, like a sump pump, that's something you need to consider. But you can add up all those. I would go with the higher, the maximum draw. And what you're gonna quickly see is anything with a heating element. Like if you have electric heat, a boiler system, well, you can see that is just a massive amount of power. If I had that kind of setup and I needed to go towards this maximum of 14,000 watts or 14 kilowatts, that would be well beyond my capacity just for that one appliance alone. So you are gonna to have to add those up. And again, you're not gonna be running all the circuits in your house. And then the second way, the one I prefer, is whether or not you feel comfortable working in a panel with the power on. That is on you to decide if you're safe doing that. Because then I'm going to actually use a current clamp to understand the amperage that's coming when I'm actually running these critical circuits. So I'm going to go through a scenario. I'm going to run all the different things I want to run in a blackout scenario and then see if I'm below the amperage that I would need to be so that my backup generator and my selection for that generator in light box are correct to meet my needs. Now I should have mentioned before I removed that cover, I actually turned on my critical circuits. Why I did that is I want to use this current clamp to clamp around the two different 120 phases that come into our panel to make sure both of these phases are below 30 amps. Now it can be a little confusing because we're jumping from power in watts or kilowatts and then we're going over to current and amperage. Just know that power equals voltage times current. So if we're multiplying a 240 volt system times 30 amps, that's gonna be 7,200 watts, right? 240 times 30 equals 7,200 watts. So that's how I would know right now, testing to make sure my amperage is below 30. So on the one phase, I have 11 amps right now running all of my critical circuits in the house. So I'm actually running them right now. I'm doing a real scenario. And then I have about 15 amps on my other side. Right now in my current scenario, I'm well below. So I have a little bit more capacity. I could go throughout the house, see what other lights I might wanna run or maybe some other appliance go through the real world scenario and test to make sure I'm below the threshold. I'm testing amperage and then I'm balancing and averaging the amps across those two different phases and multiplying that by 240 volts to get the power consumption. And then that power consumption, you would want to make sure it's lower than your generator that you're buying. Now, once you've identified those circuits, we now understand our power consumption needs. Believe it or not, there's a little pro tip using some caulk to easily identify those in the future to know which ones to turn on in case the power goes out. Using any white interior or exterior caulk, you'll just put a small dab on each of the numbers. And what we're trying to do here is we're going to then wipe off the excess caulk and don't press too hard because you wanna leave the white caulk in the grooves for each of the numbers. You can clean it up a little bit, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And this makes now the critical circuits extremely easy to identify. So you can quickly flip those out in a power outage and get your power back up and running. So how do we actually plug this thing in our house? What are the options we have? And I'm assuming you're not gonna be running extension cords from the generator inside the house. Sometimes we have to do that, but that is obviously not an ideal scenario. The two main options you have, the first one is the one I went with. It was the easiest to install and it met all the needs that I would have. That is a simple 30 amp inlet box and then that silver bracket on the lower left hand corner of my square D QO panel, that's called an interlock kit. Now simply an interlock kit, just make sure you cannot have power on from the grid and power on from a generator at the same time. That can introduce some safety issues. So if you were powering your house from a generator and you also had your main power grid on but you had a power outage you could have linemen outside your home working on the power lines and you're back feeding power into those lines obviously that's not something we want to do and we want to make sure everybody's safe inside and outside our home as well 
Now this is what I recommend, but the same setup also works if you did your power calculations and yours went over that 7,200 watts, you might need to step up to a 50 amp generator inlet and a 50 amp breaker, same interlock kit. And that's why on our Amazon store, you can see a link below this video in the description. If you go over to the solar and backup power section, you're gonna see the setup that I have with the Westinghouse 9500, a 30 amp extension cord, the 30 amp generator inlet. That's the setup I did with that interlock kit. But you could do a 50 amp setup with a Westinghouse 12,500 watt generator, a 50 amp inlet box, a 50 amp extension cord, and that same interlock kit. It'd be the same overall setup. You're gonna to have to have a little thicker gauge wire for wiring in that inlet box, but it's a very similar scenario. Now your other main option for connecting things up could be a transfer switch. So instead of just the interlock kit here, leveraging our electrical panel and that inlet box, you could have an inlet box and then a transfer switch where you actually are breaking out your critical circuits that you need inside this transfer switch. So when grid power is there, you would have the selection down to line. Let's say that's powering your refrigerator. So power is coming into this box. It's going through this in the line selection, and then it's going back through the circuits in your home. Now in a power outage, what you do is you would connect your generator to an inlet box like we have behind there. And then for your transfer switch, you would be switching these over to the gen or generator selection. So then you can power the critical selections and you have some monitoring here in terms of power consumption. So there's a few more features here, but this is a much more complex install. And if you're hiring this out, this is gonna be some additional labor. Usually these 30 amps will have about five different circuits. It has four 120 volt circuits and one 240. And then if you go with the 50 amp option, you're looking at about 10 different circuits. Now let me know down in the comments, do you have any feedback for my overall setup here? But also, maybe you have a few questions on your own setup you need some help with. I'd love to jump in and help you out. Now when it comes to price, overall my setup here for this generator inlet box, the breaker, the interlock kit, and the Romex, the 10.3 Romex connecting up, is only about $175 in material cost. Now if I add another $75 for my 30 amp extension cord, I'm at about 250, and then adding on the Westinghouse 9500, this is currently at $950 on Amazon. So adding all that up, I have a whole house backup system for $1,200 and to be honest with you, not a ton of labor. In one weekend, you can easily knock this project out and now have a whole house backup system. And then you have a portable generator that you can use for camping, for tailgating. Maybe you have a job site that the power isn't on yet. This thing has four 120 volt outlet takeoffs and then it has that 30 amp 240 volt. So it is more than capable. I can't really speak to the longevity and durability of this, but overall the ratings are really good on Amazon and for the price, it's really hard to go wrong. Now for a 50 amp setup, I think you need to add about $400. Now you could argue, why would you not just go with the 50 amp setup? It's gonna be pretty much the same exact setup, 50 amp inlet, same interlock, 50 amp circuit breaker, a little bit thicker extension cord, and then that bigger Westinghouse 12,500 watt generator, you're gonna have a much more capable system and you're gonna be able to run a lot more in your house during a power outage. Now it's really hard to beat this, right? So you can compare this to a classic Generac setup. You see those stationary generators with the nice enclosures outside of houses. Those can be very capable systems directly plumbed into your natural gas they start themselves up and check all the systems every so often. They're really nice setups, but you're talking about 5,000 or 6,000 in material, and usually you need those professionally installed. So really, it's more like a $10,000 system. For me, we just simply do not have that many power outages where I can justify that type of cost. So this is more than what I need. Now, if you wanna do this exact project and you need a little help, Check out this video right here, and that is gonna help you if you need to move around any circuit breakers to get that interlock kit set up. And then check out this video right here, which shows this exact 30 amp generator inlet 
and interlock installation, which will help you through your project. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.